Guys, what's going on? It's Oregon Motorcycle bringing you another awesome episode today. I am, you guys are inside my computer. All right, folks, today we're talking about Lightroom. Lightroom is, um, it's a, you know, it's a photo editing program. And in today's video, I'm going to teach you guys a couple basic tricks that will dramatically change your photos. And if you're a YouTuber, uh, you should probably be editing your thumbnails, um, in Lightroom and then using whatever else program you want, um, to put the titles and, and graphics and everything on. I use uh, paint to do my final uh, part of the uh, of the process, but, uh, like I would say 80 to 90% of my thumbnails are edited right here in Lightroom. And, um, so to be honest with you, uh, for about the past two years, um, I've been using the mobile version because you can virtually do everything on the mobile version. It, uh, actually, according to my knowledge, you, you can do everything on the mobile version that you can do here on the PC. But for today's video, I'm going to be doing the PC here so I can do a proper screen recording and show you guys exactly uh, how to use this program and you know what to do. Um, so I'm going to be a bit rusty on, uh, on the PC version. But I've been playing around with it already, and, and in fact, um, I just now downloaded the app to this to this Mac right here. So this is a MacBook Air. It's the, it has the new M1 chip on it. It's a it's a pretty amazing um, computer. So um, I know this is a motorcycle channel. So I think what we'll do is we'll do some motorcycle photos, and uh, I wanted to do that this car photo too though because I, it's a good you know. It's it's a good photo to to work on. So, anyways, guys, just to give you a little bit of background. Um, you know, I've been dabbling or doing photography. You could say for uh, I don't know. I've been into it for probably fifteen or twenty years, and I've been doing it on a professional level for probably five to six years. And um, most all my work is aerial photography with drones and stuff like that, um, for the most part. But um, and. You know, so I, I know the ins and outs, um, the basics, but we're not going to be talking about photography today. We're talking about editing. So the photos you have that you've already taken, you know, um, you can bring into this program and uh, dramatically, you know, alter them to your liking, do the proper corrections to them. Um, there's a lot of things you can do in this program. And I'm by no means a Lightroom professional, um, you know, but I would consider myself pretty, pretty decent at this program. And you guys got to remember that, you know, when you're photo editing, this is like your, this is your own style. Okay. So everybody like has their own style. So, and some of the photographers that I've learned a lot from people like Peter McKinnon and, uh, what's that other guy? Frono's photos, <laughs> uh, Jared Poland, <laughs> that guy's pretty crazy. Uh, but I've learned so much from him, you know, and people like Casey Neistat and those guys have a kind of unique style, but I kind of follow like Jared Poland style a little bit where it tends to be like higher contrast and, you know, a little more dramatic and that kind of thing. And, you know, this is, this has evolved over years and years. So don't expect just awesome outcomes, you know, like, you know, right out of the gate. It's going to take a long time for you guys to really get comfortable and really experience. And, but this is going to give you a good jump start. This video is going to give you a good jump start, you guys. So, um, now this, this uh, app does cost a little bit of money. It's a $10 a month subscription, but honestly, you guys, if you're, you know, into photography at all, or you're doing the YouTube thing at all, and you want to create some nice thumbnails, or, you know, you're doing Instagram for sure, you know, you guys got to get into Lightroom, and you got to, you know, learn how to use that properly. And uh, I mean, the sky's the limit pretty much. And I believe when you buy the, the package for $10 a month, it comes with um, a couple other apps, and I think it comes with uh, Photoshop. So I have Photoshop, but to be honest, I think I've done the tutorial on it once and that was years ago. I don't use Photoshop and, you know, it's it's whatever. So we're not talking about any uh, Photoshop or anything today. We're just going to uh, edit some photos. So this is my library. It, it automatically transferred over when I downloaded the app. Um, so when you guys, uh, if you guys are getting this for the first time, you're going to have to actually import photos. So, you, you know, you just go over and, and import right here there's import profile no that's not it it's uh 
like I said, I'm going to be rusty on here, but basically you'll, you'll find wherever you need to import the photos from and, and blah, blah, blah. But like I said, I'm not really going over any of that stuff. Um, I'm just going to show you guys a couple editing tricks that will really go a long ways in your editing. So let's pick a photo here. I'm just kind of scrolling through my photos here. Uh, I'm trying to find, let's go back to this car one. We'll, we'll do some motorcycle ones here in a minute, but uh, let's start with this one. Now, if you know, I have a couple, this is on my camping trip I did a couple months ago, and um, I edited a few of the other ones you guys can see down below, down here. But like this one, I don't like, so I didn't edit it. And that's usually kind of what I do. So um, anyways, um, let's start with the basics, you guys. Now, if you go over here, you click these, um, you can crop. And then there's healing and paint brushing and all that stuff. And you know, those uh, filters and all that stuff. And But first and foremost, um, look, I just got the app downloaded. That's why it's giving me all these prompts and everything. So anyways, thanks, thanks, thanks. One thing you guys want to make sure, and you can do this while you're shooting the photo too, um, is just make sure the horizon's level. Um, that's a really big thing. Like, uh, you know, so if you click on this over here, you can see and you follow the little uh, grid across and just, you know, get that horizon level. This horizon was pretty level, you know, from the get go or whatever. So, I mean, I think it's level there and it came back to zero. So that's like, you know, just a basic common rule that just, you know, make sure your horizon's level. Um, and then we'll go back to another basic, uh, rule of thumb that people do is, you know, you're always going to turn down the highlights a little bit, especially if it's in a sunny picture. This was taken like right at sunrise, like the sun was barely over the mountain when this picture was shot. So there's not much brightness in it. And you're always going to want to bring out the shadows a little bit, depending on the, on depending on, you know, how dark it is or how, how, what kind of shadows you guys have. Uh, this picture is looking okay, but we're going to do some things to it that might make the photo darker. So we may come back to these settings and um, adjust those. The other thing I like to do too is add contrast. Almost all my photos have a little bit of extra contrast in there. But again, like we're going to do some things to this photo that might induce that or might seem like it has a little more contrast or whatever. So, um, uh, but this, like this was taken from the iPhone and typically from the iPhone, I don't have to add much contrast. If this was a GoPro shot or something or a screenshot from the GoPro, I'd probably have to go like all the way up to 40, sometimes to 60 on the contrast. But you can see when I get up there on this photo that it's really not necessary. So I'll just leave it down there low. But these three uh, sliders right here are moved in this position on all my photos. It just depends on the type of photo and how much you want to go in either direction. So, <clears throat> which means for whatever reason, when I do the pro raw, which is on my phone, um, it comes in with the color already adjusted or the temp and the tint already adjusted. And it also comes in with some sharpening too. And I don't know why it does that. It might be for preview sake, or whatever. Um, I do recommend shooting in raw because you can extract a lot more from the photo if you are shooting in raw. But uh, a good rule to do is if you come over here to the white balance, hit auto and then like you don't have to use auto, but it'll give you an idea of like where you're at, right? So you can see how far the sliders jumped, right? This one didn't move that far, but what we can do now is we can try to like start moving the sliders back to where they were and we can go, okay, like, you know, we're kind of looking for that white balance. So the white balance is kind of hard in this photo. The only white I really see the real white is, would be right here in the waves, you know? So we're trying to look for something that's white and we're trying to make sure that that white is white. And that's what we're doing here with this, with these adjustments here, okay? So, and again, a lot of the times you guys, when you go, if you have a regular JPEG photo you shot from your phone, you can just come in here and hit auto and it'll tweak it a little bit for you. And you'll look and you'll say, okay, that looks a little bit better. Uh, iPhones tend to tend to shoot a little more bluer or whatever, a little more colder, it seems like. So that's something to consider. So I don't know. Um, I kind of like the way this is looking right in that area. So we'll, we'll leave that there. And like I said, you know, you guys can always go back and fine tune these or whatever, but that's just another little, little trick to do or whatever. So, um, all right, next thing is effects. Now this is really where you can add a lot of um, dramatic, uh, I guess, quality to the photo, you know, so to speak, or, or whatever, however you want to call it. So um, one of my little tricks, I guess you could say, or whatever, I like to add a lot of clarity to the photo and that, does a lot of crazy stuff. And you guys got to remember that again, this is like, um, you can consider this artwork or, or whatever you want to consider it. Okay. So this is again, your personal preference. Um, you know, like 
it it might look good to you, but it might not look good to other people, right? And then, so you got a base, like, are you trying to impress other people? Are you selling these photos? Are you, do you have a customer base or whatever? That's, you know, or are you just like keeping these for your personal interest? Or are you posting them on Instagram and trying to get more likes? You know, so you can do these things and play around with these things and see how the response is, especially nowadays with social media and stuff. So uh, we'll bump this clarity up. You know, let's try something around there or so. What this does is it tends to bring out, like you can see the, the detail in the rocks really come out and you can see more detail in the paint in the car and you can see more detail in the wheels. Um, so let's see if we can zoom in a little bit there. Yeah, so look at the wheels here. And then let's see, I'm gonna, I'll back this down a little bit and then it just looks, I don't know, it looks more dull, it looks like a picture more. This looks more real life when I bring the clarity up, right? It, you know, but you, so when you, when you bring the clarity up, what that does is that takes away saturation. Okay. So there's less saturation. So in some photos, you may need to turn up the saturation a little bit, but you know, that's kind of, you know, is what it is. That's again, another, you know, thing. I don't really turn the saturation up. In fact, I like, I like colors. I like pictures that don't have that much saturation. The dehaze is a really cool option. These are great for like foggy photos or foggy day photos or hazy photos or whatever. There's not really any haze in here, but this will add a lot of contrast and dehaze, when you add de dehazing, it adds saturation. So if you don't do any clarity and you add a dehaze, you need to go and take out saturation. But this is a really awesome tool to use. You can see how like, look at the sky, what it does to the sky right there. I mean, really like brings out a lot just in one slider, but this photo doesn't really need a lot of dehaze and we're going to do something to the sky here in a minute. I'm going to show you guys. We'll go back and do that. So I'm just going to take it down maybe to like right around seven or eight ish or whatever. The vinaigrette, I vinaigrette almost every single photo. And what that does is it sucks you in a little more to the photo. And again, this is personal preference, but you see, you know, you can whoop all the way, but what you do is just add a little bit. So like we'll go like maybe 10 ish, maybe something like that, you know, and that tends to draw you more towards the center of the photo or whatever. Um, so anyway, there's that. Let's go do a, a gradient filter on the sky here. And so whenever I have a photo like this, especially like this was in broad daylight, the sky would be a lot more overexposed. Okay, so we click the linear gradient uh, tool over here on the side. And this is already set up for a square. So I'm just gonna come up here at the very top of the photo and you can even go above the photo. Here's the cursor right here in the center top. And we're just gonna drag this down, go a little further, and you guys can like, you know, we'll go something like that, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna decrease the exposure in this area and possibly increase the saturation. Let's we'll just see how it looks. So we go over here and slide this exposure bar down a little bit. See how we're darkening the sky there? Just a little bit. And then we can go over here and we can bump up the saturation and really make the sky blue, right? And we didn't affect the exposure by doing that. So we have a super blue sky, but it's still kind of bright. And even if we did that, like I don't even like turning the exposure down. We don't need to do it because there's not a lot of light here. So we can do that. And then you can come here and you can also like blur it out. Like if you wanted to make it like more blurry or whatever and blah, blah, blah. But the radiant filters or linear gradient filters, whatever you want to call them, it's great to um, mess with. And all that stuff. Now watch this too. You can go, and this is where it gets kind of fun. Go to the color down here and see what we can do to the sky. We can make it do all kinds of crazy stuff. So you can do some really weird stuff like that, right? So just kind of make it pink for, for now or whatever. <laughs> So anyways, those are some some very basic things. Let's go look at a different photo. And then like if you want to see like the like that's the original. And then now we're looking at that right there. And I'd probably go back and maybe turn the shadows up a little bit on this one. And again, the sky you guys were just playing around. Turn the shadows up maybe a little bit. OK, so I'm on, you know, it's OK. Here's an edit I did. You know, this is an edit I did on my phone. So if we go here. That's the original. It's got the birds. Oh, what I do? Did I just apply? Oh, great. I think I ap applied the edit to that. Oops. Or I don't know. Anyways, let's see if I can. 
fuck the original. Yeah, there's the original. And then there's my edit on it. Um, that's the one we just did. Here's another one. This is my screensaver. And that's the original photo. And then that's my edit. Uh, here's another one. This one probably has too much contrast. Probably too much contrast in the rocks here. I could probably like... So see the contrast there is all the way at 42. You can turn these down. And a good thing to do, you guys, is like you edit a picture, go away for a while, maybe go to the bathroom and then come back and look at it. Like I haven't looked at this photo in, in weeks. And now I'm coming back to it. I'm just like right out of the gate. I'm like, oh, it's it's too much contrast. And maybe let's let's look at the rocks a little bit better. So I'll turn the shadows up and maybe that looks a little better. And then, you know, um, does it need some vinaigrette? Does it need more? You know, I don't know. Anyways. Let's see if we can find some unedited motorcycle pics. Um, that one is edited. This one's not. This is not really a great photo, but... Um, we can do this one. So, uh, no, this is a horrible photo. <laughs> but, so, I want to crop some of this out, okay? So, let's say, like, I want to move myself out of here because my shadows there try to get some of that out and yeah composition's all right maybe the road looks good here now so this might be better once it's cropped um yeah i like that how do i go okay all right so start out with the basics we'll just decrease the highlights a little bit there's not really that much shadow in this one there is a sky up here we can see what we can achieve. Yeah, we got the sky down. See that? See how we got the sky blue by decreasing the highlights? But we also dim this down a little bit, right? So we can just maybe increase that a little bit more. Okay. And then let's go check out some other stuff here. Let's go to the clarity. Turn that clarity up. See how the buildings in the background kind of it kind of popped, you know, and then like there's more like more detail in the bike. It, I think the clarity is a cool feature to use. And then we'll throw a little vinaigrette on it, a little bit. Kind of digging that. It's it's all right. There's the original. Okay, this is what you're gonna. That's what's gonna come out of your phone. And then that's something we can do in Lightroom, and eh, it might be a little dark. A little dark. Um, let's see. Here's a. Let's do this. A little dark. You know, you can tap the exposure up a little bit. Something like that. Now the bike's popping a little bit more. Yeah, I kind of like that. Looking good. So, you know, we're doing the basics, you guys. The highlights, the shadows. Um, you know, you're going to add some clarity possibly dehaze, you know, but those de de the dehaze typically works better for landscape photos or something, you know, you don't really necessarily use it when you're doing something like this with a close up or whatever. Um, let's see what else we got here. Okay, so this is like, um, you can, again, this is not the best photo, but Let's say you shot this photo, okay, and you were you wanted to send it to your friends, but you're like, oh man, there's a bunch of shadows and this crazy light coming in, right? Oops. So what we could do here on this photo is we can use again, we come in here, the highlights, try to turn those down a little bit, and then we'll try to pull some of those shadows out. And then now let's do clarity for fun. Now let's see what the dehaze does here. Yeah, you see how that dehaze really is clearing this this photo up, you know. But see, it added saturation, so see the, uh, the yellow really came out, and the red in my bike doesn't look the greatest. Um, so I just come up here to saturation and just turn the saturation down just a hair, something like that. Uh, throw a vinaigrette on it. Yeah, kind of liking this doesn't need contrast added it's got enough contrast i think i mean so kind of just brought that picture back out there's the original okay 
and then that's what we made it into. And again, you guys can sit and tweak this and fine tune it. I'm just kind of trying to, I mean, this turned into a long video, but just showing you these basics here, you know, we're, we're doing the highlights, the shadows, the contrast if you need it, this photo doesn't. And then like that photo was hazy in the beginning, as you've seen, you can see it in the trees, you know, and then so by using that dehaze, it kind of brought out more of the trees and got rid of that haze that was coming through in the sunlight or whatever. This is an early morning shot into the sun. And then so we brought out these shadows too. So there you go. That, that I think that was a good example of how to use this editor. And you guys, I know your phone has editing tools in it. And I know Apple's been, you know, working on their, you know, and upgrading it every year. But I'm telling you guys, there's just no comparison to Lightroom. They're just... And you talk to any professionals or anybody that's, you know, doing photography on a professional level and they're using Lightroom, um, you know, so let's see, this is, that's the original. And then that's what I edited. And again, that was another one edited on my phone. This is a good photo too. I like this one. Oh, wow. No. Okay. So this one was all souped up crazy for a thumbnail, I believe. And you can see the clarity is all the way up to a hundred percent. So this is something I did to make it look a little crazy, but you can see what you can do with the clarity and get it all like, that's something good to use too for your thumbnails on YouTube. Um, you know, that, that, this is kind of a okay shot. Let's see this one, this one. This is a picture I edited for my buddy, but it was kind of weird because it was sent over low quality. Here's another photo. Um, so this is a good example here. Now this this has got some more trickery into it that I'm not going to go into, but there's the original, and then there's what I did. So that's again, you know, that's like I said, it's kind of dramatic, you know. And again, that's just my style. You guys can come up with some of your own style. So this was a picture I took in Colorado. And um, this was with my drone, which has a really small sensor, but you can see here what I did with it. Really um, did it up. So we're just, you know, adding contrast over here. The highlights weren't even touched. I pulled some of the shadows out. But, you know, what's really gonna do it again is that clarity. Because if you see the clarity go down, you can just see how the barn doesn't look as good. You can turn the clarity back up. You can see how things start to pop a little bit more. You can put a little vinaigrette on it, you know. Um, and it looks like it does have a, a filter too up here. Yeah, it has a filter here for the sky. So, which was a little bit, but that's the original. And then there's after it was edited. So, I don't know, guys. I hope these tricks are, are helping you um, become a little more familiar with photo editing and uh, this was another good picture here. Uh, there's the original. And then that's what I put into it. And again, just, just going back and looking at the edit, um, it's just basic stuff, you know, adding in the contrast here, decreasing the highlights. I didn't pull out any shadows here. Um, probably because I had some good sun coming into the face of the cow, which I did. Um, and then I did an auto white balance here. Let's see and uh, just added some clarity again and a little dehazing on this one and a vinaigrette. Now, what I'm seeing right here, what it looks like is the horizon is off in the background. It looks like a little bit, but look at the barn here. The barn kind of looks somewhat straight back there and the cow looks somewhat straight. So but that house out here looks a little crooked. I don't know. This photo could be twisted a little bit, but maybe I didn't twist it because I wanted to get the whole nose in the shot. I don't know. But yeah, I really like this photo. So there's another one. So this would be the original. And then this, this would be my edit that I put on it. And again, if you go over here and look at the, the sliders, it's a little bit of get, a little bit of dehaze on this one, a lot of clarity, well, almost 50% clarity. And then I did an auto white balance on it because again, you know, this is a white and black cow and there's white snow, right? And uh, a little bit of shadows, highlights, and contrast. And I'm sure this has a this has a, a radiant filter on it again, because so anytime you know that we're putting, and I kind of matched the horizon there with it. Oh, okay, that's why it looked off in the other photo because it is sloping down. Anyways, anytime I have um, you know a sky meeting the ground like this, I'm almost always putting a radiant filter in it. That photo is kind of good. Um, there's the original, and then there's what I did with it. 
So that's that's a pretty good edit there. So let's look at these right here. So um, contrast highlights are down. The shadows are really up, and that's what this is. And yeah, so what I did is I put a round. Uh, see this round radius uh, filter on it, and then you go over here and you turn the exposure up. And that's how I got the bike to pop so much. So it looks like they're shining a light on it. This is another trick you guys can do if um, you have a dark photo or you're taking the photo at night and you want to, you know, pretend like you're shining a light. As long as you get the exposure right on the object and you don't have, you know, uh, black spots, like the exposure is good enough to pull out on this. Obviously, I did it. And um, so it looks like, you know, it looks like there's a light on there, like a light shining on on the bike. So. Does that make sense? You know, you just do the round filter on it and it just highlights this area. You can also paint with your finger or your or your mouse. You can paint an area like this, you know, in the sky or whatever, and then adjust the contrast, saturation, whatever. All, all the adjustments for the filters are over here or the radiant filters or whatever. Radial gradients, whatever they call them. This one's a linear gradient. I'm sorry, gradients. I don't know the stuff. So, and then again, auto white balance. And the clarity, look at the clarity at 100% on this one. And the vinaigrette is pretty decent too. It's keeping the outer portions dark. So it, it again, gives it more of that effect of there, there's a light shining on the bike. So that's the original, which looks like there's light all around the bike, except on the bike. But then my edit looks like there's a light shining on the bike. So going to end it there in a high one. I really like this edit. I haven't looked at it in a couple months. Kind of impressed with myself <laughs> looking at this edit right here because it looks sweet. Anyways, guys, um, if you guys are liking my content, I don't do content like this usually, but I just got a wild hair at my butt. It's kind of been raining today. So this was a good rainy day project. So, um, yeah, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. And I'll see you on the next one.